Hey guys, welcome to another video. I have some new bead colours, a hankering for some disc time and a promise for my editor that there will be no terrible puns in this video. <clears throat> Serious voice on. Also, I have new discs and I want to break them in. Currently, my oldest disc is the one that I use the most and it's slightly worn out. Oh, poor thing. The numbers have been rubbed off, but it's still perfectly serviceable and like I said, I use it the most. As you can see, I have a fairly long project on it at the moment, hence the need for the other discs. If you do a lot of Kumihima projects, it's beneficial to have extra discs anyway, so you can actually easily get by with one, but you need to finish each project before moving on to the next or even prepping a new one and keeping it aside until you are ready. I like to have at least three so that I can have one for longer, more time consuming projects, the second one for a current project and a third in case inspiration strikes and I need to string up the beads before I forget. Okay, so moving on, I've already picked my pattern and will place an image of it somewhere on the screen, maybe at the bottom left or yeah, somewhere. <laughs> And if I haven't mentioned it yet, I'm going to be making a bracelet today. To accompany the disc, I have my beads in silver and these two shades of blue. One is an aqua blue and the other a, let's just say, dark blue. These beads are not uniform in any way, so each bead varies quite a bit in size. The listing said that they were 8-0s, but I'm doubting it slightly. To me, they land somewhere between 8-0s and 6-0s. They're not as big as the 6-0s, but they're definitely slightly bigger than the 8-0s. Irregular beads gonna be irregular, I guess. Anyway, you will also need some clasp closures. I have a selection here, including a magnetic one, a toggle and hoop clasp, but you could also use the regular lobster claw um, clasp with the cap ends. For this string, I'm just using what I have the most, which is black, since none of the strings will actually be showing in the final product anyway. As a side note, you will also need some sharp scissors, strong glue, a tape measure, and some extra thread. So you could use the DMC, or you can actually use the Eslon thread. Now, I'm not entirely sure which one I used here, but I will check and I will drop the details in the description box below. Okay, now it's time to measure the strings. But, you know, measuring how much string you will need for a bracelet is always a bit of a guessing game. You just need to keep experimenting and find out what works for you, since the lengths you will need will depend sort of heavily on the size of the beads you use. What I usually do is measure my wrist, then double that number to get the length of each string. I then double that number again to get the final measurement of four strings that will then be folded in half. So I usually like the four string measurement because I fold my strings in half and I find it more efficient to cut four strings and fold it in half than to cut eight strings. <laughs> ah, maths. Anyway, I then add an extra three or four inches just to be safe and to give that extra leeway so that my strings are approximately 30, 30 to 35 inches, I'd say. Now, as I mentioned before, this is just a rough estimate and ultimately you will need more or less depending on the size of the beads. But it is better to have more than to not have enough as it's impossible to add string once you start braiding or cutting them. Okay, so I wanted one of my bracelets to just be a gradient of color from one to the other without a hard line, so I didn't follow a pattern as such. I mean, in the case of the Friendship Bracelet um, pattern generator, it's not very intuitive in that respect because you can get color variations depending on how you um, load the beads. The pattern generator just takes into account a solid line like each bead is each string is going to be a solid line but you can actually have multiple colors on a string so anyway I don't actually mind the harsh delineated line but I thought I'd try to blend it all the same to do this I just mix the colors in roughly in the middle 
I'm not really going to be too precious about this but essentially what I'm doing is stringing on the darker blue then when I get to the halfway point I start to add in the aqua blue then back to the darker blue again before finally switching to the aqua permanently till the end. Let me see if I can explain this properly without just losing my mind. So if for example you have 60 beads per string, you'll have 30 beads of each colour, right? Now you can then either decide to split the bracelet up into thirds and have the two colours at 20 beads each on either end and mix up the 20 beads in the middle to give you a longer gradient. Or you could have the solid colours be 25 beads each and the gradient will be over 10 beads instead. Either way works, I guess. For the second bracelet, I'll be following the pattern and using just one of the colors. I've already made some with the two colors and you'll see them at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and string up my beads and set up my discs off camera and get back when I start weaving. Enjoy the time lapse. After weaving the last bead, I carried on just um, for a few more rounds so I could have a little end to grab and glue. So I glued these and secured the strings before cutting them. Now this is where it gets a bit tricky. Remember that extra yarn that I said you, you needed at the beginning? Well this is where that comes in. Okay, so once those ends have been secured with glue and uh, dry and safe to cut, um, go ahead and cut a length that's just smaller than your cap end, because obviously if you, don't, if you have it too big, it, the cap end won't fit. So this is where I used a tapestry needle and threaded through a short length of the DMC yarn that um, I mentioned earlier. You can actually use the Eslon cord, but I find that the other yarn works best for me. Once you've threaded the yarn at the end of the bracelet, just pull one string so it's longer than the other and wrap that around the end of the bracelet. You want to reach just under the thickness of the actual end cap because if it's too thick, the cap won't fit and the glue will just squish out. <laughs> so you just, you just wanna go for that sweet spot. This just takes practice, so the more you do it, the, the better you'll get at it. Alternatively, you could just get smaller end caps. I mean, I'm using here six millimeter end caps because that's all I had, but you can go down to, I believe, um, a three millimeter, I think is the smallest. I, I could be wrong, but yeah, th those, those are your two options. So after I'm done wrapping the yarn around the end, I will basically use my needle again and um, sew that the ends or the tail ends of that yarn back into the bracelet to make it extra secure for creating some more knots for even more security <laughs> because the whole point is it's going to be on the, uh, a bracelet so it needs to be really really strong after that's done i then use a super strong glue to glue in that end cap using strong glue i put some in the inside of the cap and a small amount around the end of the bracelet I left it to dry thoroughly before applying all the hardware. When gluing the magnetic clasp, I'd recommend keeping it closed while you do the both ends and then pull them apart to let them dry or cure or set. Also, it's safer to work on one magnetic clasp at a time 
I've had them fly off to seek each other out and it makes a mess, believe me. So on that note guys, thanks for watching. I absolutely love these bracelets. I can do so many combinations and so many colors. Oh my God, all the colors. I have some color variations on the way with a similar concept, so stick around if you'd like to see more. And they won't necessarily be in bracelet form. Hmm. As always, please like, share, comment, and even consider subscribing if you like the content I create. Don't forget to hit that bell button to be notified whenever I upload a new video. And my current upload schedule is every two weeks on Friday at 9am GMT. So, brace yourself for some beauty shots. <laughs> <laughs> See you in the next one. Bye. That was an unintentional pun. Sorry. <laughs> Not sorry.